So this is Lisa Jacobson. Um, very quickly, I have had over 9,000 migraines in my life, and I started a group called The Daily Migraine. Today, Lunch with Lisa is being sponsored by the American Migraine Foundation, an amazing organization. Um, you have migraines, so you're here, or you love someone with migraines, you can go on to AmericanMigraineFoundation.org and you can find everything you need. It's like a giant library of Congress on migraine. Um, so let's start. Lunch with Lisa. I'm here today to talk about parenting with migraine. Um, I've had over 9,000 migraines over 36 years. And um, there have been times when I was able to function really well and then times that I could barely function. Um, I have two kids. Guys, please write. I want this to be sort of a dialogue. Even though you can't speak, I can read what you're saying, okay? So um, tell me where you're from and tell me if you have kids, if you don't have kids, are you care a caretaker for elderly parents? Been there, done that also. Um, anyway, this is Lunch with Lisa. Let me start by telling you what I am not having for lunch, okay? I am not having aged cheese, okay? Now, does that cause migraines for me? You may be like me where it's really hard to tease out all your triggers. I don't know. But if I can avoid it, I'd just rather have like goat cheese, okay? So I am not having cheese. I am also not having chocolate. Okay, you guys know this is sort of migraine 101, this part. Um, why would I want to add to whatever's going on in my head already? Okay, so not having chocolate, and I am definitely not having red wine. Okay, and I'm sure you're not either. Now, what's really important about that is not, I mean, if it doesn't bother you or give you a migraine, by all means, you should feel free, right? But to me, because I can't really tell, because I have so many triggers, as many of you do, um, I, if I can avoid it, if I don't care, chocolate's a little hard, I have to say. But for me, wine is not hard. Maybe for you it is, right? So um, we're going to talk about so many things. I'm going to talk really fast. And let me tell you what my goal is today. My goal is that you are part of this conversation, tell me where you're from, tell me how many kids you have or parents you're taking care of or animals, whatever it is you are caretaking or parenting. Um, let's have a whole discussion. You can ask me questions. I'm happy to answer them. I'm going to talk really fast. I'm just going to give you lots and lots of ideas. Some will not be relevant. Some may be like a huge epiphany for you and everything in between. Okay, so let's start by talking about what it's like to be a parent with migraine. Well, um, there are a lot of times when you probably can't function, right? And there are probably a lot of times where you feel like a bad mom or dad. Um, there are, or anything in between, however you identify. Um, and I think that one of the things that we do, because it's such an important job, is we beat ourselves up. Okay, so I'm here to really tell you that you have to minimize that because all that does is increase your migraines, right? So migraine disease, I'm trying to change my language. The American Migraine Foundation has come up with less stigmatizing words, so I will share them with you. Today's my first day getting used to them. Instead of saying uh, I'm a migrainer, I'm a person with migraine, okay? or migraine disease, saying I have migraines, you wouldn't say I have asthmas, okay? So anyway, so migraine disease is an invisible illness and that's one of the issues. We have to cancel last minute a lot of times. We, we can't pick up our kids you know, at school, we can't cook dinner, we can't go to work, we can't, we're not reliable and meanwhile, most of most people think it's just a headache, right? Okay, well, I'm here again. I've had over 9,000 migraines and I've learned a lot through the years. And I'm here to say that to tell you at least my philosophy, um, if it's helpful, which is that I have learned 
that this is not my fault. I got it from somebody else in my family, probably. Um, and every family has issues and many families have multiple issues. And a person who has migraine disease has a disease and it just happens to be you. And so the family has to adjust, okay? That's the first thing that I have to say. The second thing I have to say from my point of view, if it's helpful, is that um, it's really easy to over time to get jaded. Again, I've had 9,000 migraines. Probably I was jaded at number 600, right? But I am much older now and I have a lot more experience. And what I've learned is that I am just not going to be a victim. Yes, this thing happened to me. You know, some of you were born with it. I had neck surgery when I was 29 and never had a headache and then had one every day, you know? So everyone's different. So I am not gonna, I am, I am not gonna beat myself up. I'm gonna accept what it is I have. And then I'm gonna do everything I can to make everything around me work the best that it can, right? So first of all, if migraine disease is an invisible illness, then with all honesty, how are other people who don't get migraine supposed to know what it is or what it looks like if they can't see when you have one? So I believe, I'll speak for myself, it's up to me to educate them. And that's what I wanna talk about today, okay? So the first thing is your children. Okay, my children are now in their 20s. They're adult children. When I was, when they were born, I had migraine. I had been having migraine for a while, migraine disease. And I felt like crap because I would be lying in my, with ice on my head in a dark room. I, there were times I couldn't function at all. And, you know, my little daughter would come in with an ice pack. You know, my son would come in and sleep with me. And I do have to say, honestly, because I remember both of those things made me feel a lot better because it just calmed me down. But I was wondering, like, am I hurting them? What am I doing to them? Are they going to be screwed up? So um, I'm here to tell you that I firmly believe, again, all these things are my opinion or and opinions of people who have joined the Daily Migraine over the years who have you know, express their opinions. And please tell me, you know, write to me. This is like a dialogue. I'm going to read what you write right here. And so you can share that with me. Um, anyway, I think, and it has been proven for me with my own kids, that it's unfortunate, right? But it made both of my kids very compassionate. And it is no coincidence this might give you the chills because it gives me, just gave me the chills that my son, who's 27, who had no idea what he wanted to do, is in third year medical school. And as we speak right here, he is doing a rotation in neurology at a hospital. And he told me that he was expecting to see Parkinson's patients and, and, uh, and you know, dementia patients. And he said 90% of the people who come in are headache patients. So there are a billion people in this world who have migraine disease. 39 million are in the U.S. Okay. It's, it's everywhere and it's relentless. And many of us feel alone. But it's really important that you understand what, what, what I'm saying, which is it's not your fault. If you can, try your hardest not to be a victim, and hopefully you can do some of these things I'm suggesting that might make your life better as a mom, a dad, or, or whatever, okay? So my first giant tip is to plan, plan, plan. One of the things we do, because we're always hopeful maybe this thing will go away that we have, is that it is inevitable that we're gonna get a migraine tomorrow, tonight, a week from now. So if that is going to happen, and we all know it will, whether we're hoping it won't, but we know it will, then why don't we plan, right? There's, for me, at my age now, after all these years of migraine, I 
there is no excuse for me not to plan. Okay, so what can you plan? You guys, write to me and tell me, what can you plan as a parent that when the migraine hits you, you don't have to be so present, okay? So one of these things is you can, when you do feel good, you can cook a lot of meals and you can freeze them, okay? Number two, I'm just thinking this, I probably have like over here 70 different things you can do. So I'm gonna throw them out. Um, okay, Kim Lipper, nice to meet you. Um, yeah, you have to have a contingency plan. It's critical, okay? Number two, have a pain pal. I got this from um, Migraine Again, which is also an excellent group, which is that you, you find someone, doesn't have to be somebody with migraine, but somebody who also has these pain issues, okay? So you might have a friend next door who has fibromyalgia and really has trouble certain days dealing with his or her kids, okay? So maybe you wanna have a group and you put it in your group chat and you say, is there anybody who can help me today? I can't even get out of bed and I need somebody to pick up my kids, right? So having a pain pal, and again, like these things take time. And I think that the biggest issue I've learned with people with migraine is that they think it's a great idea, but they never get around to doing it. So I'm gonna challenge you to pick one or two things that you hear today. And as soon as this is over, take 10 minutes and set them up, okay? Most of these things don't take much time at all, okay? Number three, or I'll just stop counting. Um, I have a, a migraine bag in my car and at work. And I had that when I had little kids. And what would go in there? Let me know what you think. What, what do you think should go in there? That when the migraine, you know, a migraine inevitably hits, what do you need for you to take the edge off? I'm not saying get rid of them because we wouldn't be here if we, quote, got rid of them. To me, success means to be functional. And there's a real difference between being functional and getting rid of all your migraines. I think that's a setup for failure. Yeah, some people do. Like I said, it's lunch with Lisa today, okay? I'm not having red wine. I'm not having aged cheese and I'm not having chocolate, okay? Just a few things I'm not having today. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, so, so what would you put in there? So you could just knock it out a little bit. Um, your abortive pills. And can I just say, why do these drug companies make this? Okay, even not having a migraine, watch this. I can't even get them off. And then you have to peel them back. How are you, that gives me such a, my, a migraine even thinking about it. Anyway, what can you put in there? Let's see what you say. Um, Tell me what you would do. I'll give you a few things. Sometimes you get a migraine if you haven't eaten. So I have, this is my giant box of migraine stuff to show you guys. Okay, so here's some things I have in my bag, actually. I always have water. I always have my migraine pills. I have a little fan in case I'm stuck at a baseball game, you know, and it's so hot. I also have... This thing, it, I mean, this is like a gator that you get wet, and so in the summer or whenever it's hot, you can, you know, wear it. But it's, I also use it, and you could just have a bandana or anything. When I go, let's say in an Uber or a taxi, and they have that, you know, disgusting Christmas tree scent, um, I just go like this the whole time. Now, if I don't have it, what does that say to myself about my commitment to having self-care and to my kids, right? Okay, what else do I have in my bag? I have a little food. So for me, I like to have a little peanut butter. Other people have ginger chews, okay? Um, some people have menthol things for their head. Some people have, um, let's see, let's see what I have, earplugs. Okay, so make a migraine bag, make two if you work, 
put one in each place, and then you always have it. Um, one of the things I used to do, so here's another tip, and this is my own hack that I really, really love. It's the best one I ever had in 36 years. So when I was working or when I was taking care of my kids, we're talking about parenting, so let's do that. I would be driving them or I would be taking them somewhere or I would be spending time with them and it would hit. I get them in my eyes. Where do you guys get your migraines? Um, your migraine, grains, yeah. Um, what I would do, because I live near different stores and delis and stuff, is if I were on the run, I would run out and get a cold can of something, okay? And I got it down to a science by making the can really small. You know, those little tiny cans of Diet Coke or Coke or whatever, Pepsi. And I just stick it on my eye. And again, did that get rid of my migraine? No, not at all. But did that, did that allow me to sort of dull it for a minute while I was trying to function? Yes. So anything you can do to take it down a little bit is really important. When I would go to my kids' games, they played basketball. It was so loud with that buzzer. I thought I was just going to vomit right there. And I really looked silly. And after a while, I just didn't care. I wore sunglasses. I wore earplugs. And um, I just sat there. And I was somehow able to, to deal with it and actually enjoyed watching my kids. Um, but it's really, really hard. Um, the other thing that's really important for you to realize is none of this is your fault. Okay? So... One another thing that's really important to do is to, I think, is to be honest with your family. Okay, maybe they're not supportive, but again, in all fairness, it's an invisible illness, and it's it's up to us to explain it maybe five hundred times. Okay, that's all you can do, um, and so you can say to your kids certain things, like especially if they're little. Listen, mommy has um, ha has her head hurts some some days and so mommy needs some help so mommy needs to take care of it mommy's going to lie in um a dark room with some ice and that makes mom feel a little better and you can also give people jobs give your kids jobs you know they might want it and they might feel really good helping you and again for those of you who just joined i am here to tell you that People told me that my kids were going to turn out to be very, very caring and very compassionate. And now that they're adult children, they are so compassionate. One of my kids actually gets migraine, but is pretty calm about it because I'm able to help because I always talked about it. And also that child is able to not get scared about it and just knows that it needs to be you need to keep trying new things. I have another child, as I said before, who decided that he's going to be a doctor. And right now he's on the neurology ward dealing with people with he with headache, right? Um, and I asked them, do you think I, like, I ruined part of your life? And they said, absolutely not. Now, I want to tell you something else that was very interesting. Totally separate thing. When, when my kids were in first grade, the teacher would have the parents come in and help teach and it was it was a really nice touch because she that way she got other people it was a great teacher she got other teachers basically you know lay people but other teachers so i would come in i didn't want to miss it but i always had a migraine and so you know i'd have my ice on my eye or by the way i always have these everywhere these cold disposable packs in my car in the side in everywhere and i just step on them really fast even if it's really hot out and I know I'm going to get a migraine, I just stick it down my shirt or in my pants. And it really helps. Anyway, this teacher sat me down one day and said, I need to talk to you. My mother had migraine disease. And I always remember my mother sitting in her pajamas looking out the window. That's my whole childhood. Are you on medication? And that was way years ago. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm afraid I don't really want to take medication. I want to do everything like, you know, holistically. So she said, well, that's all well and good. But is, did, were, have you been able to, because it doesn't look like it, to function? 
I said, no. She said, how many things have you done that were holistic? And I look, I keep a list. I kept a list. I said, probably like 40, you know, acupuncture, this, that, that, you know, biofeedback, all these different things that I tried that worked for a lot of people did not work for me. And she said, all right, well, I'm just sharing with you that maybe you don't want your kids to remember you that way. So I said, I got very teary and I said, well, what am I supposed to do? And she said, get your act together. And I, I thought that was so mean and not sympathetic. I said, what do you mean? She said, if you need drugs, go get drugs. If you need this, go do this. Go do whatever you have to do to be able to function. And that was what set me on the path to starting to improve my migraines, my migraine. So I'm just throwing that out there. It's a different point of view. May not help you, may really help you. I don't know. Um, yes, your two kids are married now. All of them are very compassionate. They try to assist with everything. So the first thing is if you have guilt that someday they may be screwed up because of your migraine disease, someday they may be better than they would have been, more compassionate, more understanding because you get migraine, okay? So beating yourself up doesn't help anybody. Like it doesn't help you, doesn't help your kids, doesn't help whoever else lives in your house. I personally came to realize that my job is to spend whatever time I can trying to figure out how I can function the best that I possibly can. And guys, let me know, do you have kids? How many? Are you dealing with parents? What's helpful? What's not? Is there any advice you have? Is any of this advice helping you? Okay, what other lists do I have? Um, you do not have to be a hero. You know how they say moms, dads, parents, they, you know, they do everything and they don't care about themselves. Personally, I think that's, unless you have to, I don't think that's a good strategy. I think that's gonna give you headaches. And I think that anything you can dole out, dole out. So some people, people here are from every country. Like I can see Uzbekistan, South Africa, uh, Sweden, you know, people from everywhere. Some people have a lot of resources and some people have no resources. Resources in terms of money, people, health insurance, okay. But if you do have resources to delegate out some of these things, then I think it is money well spent. It's like money spent on your health. If you can't, if you can't get dinner on the table, if you can't put your kids on the bus, if you can't you know, do all these things that, that you feel terrible about, well then pay somebody to maybe clean clean your house once in a while, clean your apartment, right? Or maybe get somebody, I mean, I've, I've paid teenagers $10 an hour to do little different things that I just, why do I have to do it if, if I can't afford the $10 for a kid who wants to, you know, make some money to come do it? It's one less thing I have to do and a little more time I can take care of my parents um, or my kids or whoever. Um, Let's see, here's another thing in terms of being a parent, not if you're someone taking care of your elderly parents, that's a different thing and I've done that too. But let's just talk about school. Okay, so people were talking about me. She's the mom who can not help. She's the mom who cancels. She's the mom who can't go on class trips. Okay, you know what? Again, it's an invisible illness and it's nobody's fault that they can't see it. It's up to you, again, my opinion, to explain it. You know, when you offer your kids carrots and they don't eat them and they say, you know, studies have been done, if you offer them like 23 times, they'll eventually eat them. You just have to keep keep doing it. It's invisible, you know, and pl people, you don't know what kind of battles everybody's fighting inside and people don't know yours either. Okay, so anyway, I think it's really useful to go see the school nurse and explain, which is exactly what I did in, in elementary and middle and high school. And I would explain what I have. And I didn't assume that the nurse, that the nurse even understood what migraine disease is about. So 
once they understand and they see that, that they may see your child coming in needs attention or they may call your child just fainted and you cannot get there, that way they're in your court. It's almost like you need a team, your own team. And yes, there will be people who are not going to be on your team who you're very disappointed in, but there'll be plenty of people who will. And like I said before, if you're just joining, get a pain pal. Get a friend who has pain, different kind of pain, and help each other. Get a team of pain people. I could never attend sports events, athletics, soccer games, nothing. Hubby stood in for me. He's the best. He is the best when you have a hubby who stands in and not a lot of people have a spouse or a significant other who do that. Um, one of the things is I would like to see if I can help you guys maybe get to some of those events because I had the same issue. Um, one of the things I, I carry in my car, was it was an umbrella and a hat. I am never without a hat. Again, plan, plan, plan. What else do you think you guys can do to plan that would help all the people on here. Um, here's another thing I want to say. I have my list right here. There are a lot of ways to be a great parent. There isn't just one way, okay? You, if, if you feel, if you really are a great parent, then so what? You have migraine disease. You have a condition. You have an illness. And you're doing the best you can. Okay, and so there's no reason to beat yourself up for that. If somebody had a physical illness and you could see it, everybody would understand that. So again, what's challenging is that it's invisible, but it's, you can overcome that. You can overcome that explanation. Now, for those of you who just joined, I also, again, I'm Lisa Jacobson, I'm here. The American Migraine Foundation has sponsored these lunches. Um, and I'm the founder of The Daily Migraine, which I started many years ago because I went online. I couldn't find any other people like me. And so all these years later, I've got all the tips from all those hundreds of thousands of people. I didn't think of all these um, that I can share with you. Um, so, Nirmathy, I live in sunglasses, even wear it in the house. Me too. Me too. And I can't believe I used to be a little mean to my own mother and say, why are you wearing sunglasses? And is it, is it sunny inside? You know, and, and then I, I learned. So I wear sunglasses everywhere. I wear them at the gym. I wear them at a restaurant. I wear them everywhere. Because if I didn't wear them, I wouldn't be able to go. Um, there also, here's another thing I can share with you. There are migraine glasses online. I'm thinking... Axon Optics, maybe, A-X-O-N. I'm not endorsing any single vendor. I don't even care who the vendors are. I'm just here to help you guys. Oh, here's another thing that will really help you be a great parent. I actually invented this, but I don't even know if they're selling it anymore. And there are other versions. So this is not me selling anything. This is called the migraine hat. They have the ice cap, the headache hat. There's all sorts of them. Someone told me the other day that on Shark Tank, somebody, somebody is selling these. Anyway. It's ice in a hat, okay? It's like Velcro. I mean, they're all sort of the same. Okay, so ice helps me. Does ice help you or no? Oh, Theraspex, that's another, that's true. That's another kind of migraine glasses. All right, anyway, so it's cold as can be. I wrap it. Some people really like things tight on their head. That's what I've learned. I don't like things tight on my head, but I like it bumpy, so it's pressing different places. I will literally go to the gym with this in the summer. Okay, I'll go outside in the winter. And my favorite sort of hack, <laughs> meowy, icy, yes, ice and cold. Okay, what many people have told me is what they do. This is such a cool idea. Um, they put this on their head. They put a shower cap on top. Then they go in the shower and they turn on the heat. I mean, the hot water. So now you're relaxing from the hot water. Some people, I mean, it's like they take it to the level of a science. They put eucalyptus oil in because I think many of you know, for many of you, essential oils actually make you feel better. Like throw one thing on top of the next. I put a um, bench in the shower so I can actually sit there because I can't really stand that long when I feel nauseous, right? So um, yeah, so you other people put ice on their head and they put their feet in hot water. Um 
Many, many people swear by this. Now, does that get rid of your migraine disease? No. Does it even get rid of that migraine that you have right then and there? No, not really, unless you're waiting for an abortive, like a triptan or one of the new CGRP blockers, you know, all these different things that leave some people, some people that works for. Um, while you're waiting for it to kick in, that's that's my, that's what I do. But otherwise, I feel like the goal is not to completely get rid of my migraine, all my migraines that I always get. My goal is to be functional. And that is just a lower bar and much less stress. So how would you define functional? Like how would you define being a mom, a dad, a caretaker for your parent, a caretaker for your animal? What are the things that are must do's on your list? Because mine were getting my kids up and to school, making meals, right? Going to work and being able to make a living. Um, those are really critical things. So if I have a migraine that's an eight, well, if I can get it down to a six, you guys know that's like heaven. That's so much better. So that's what I go for. Um, what about you guys? What do you think? Meowie also says self-care is life. Self-care is life. I'm Muslim and I wear a hijab. That is very hard. Are you also in an area that, yeah, by very light scarves imported from the Emirates. It's expensive, but I sacrifice it. I have to cover my modesty. Okay. Okay. You know, there's, there are people, I was driving today and it's so hot where I am. It's in the high nineties. And I was watching the construction workers with long pants. This is just a lot like your hijab situ situation, right? And they had to wear this uniform. And I was thinking, oh my God, I would faint. I would throw up. But people do, and I thought I think that is great advice that you said, which is, you know, if you have a limited amount of money, okay, and you know, you need to spend it on certain things. You have to buy food, you have to buy shelter, you have to buy whatever, okay? Beyond that, I consider buying uh, this, my, you know, headache hat, migraine hat, ice cap, whatever, for $40 or $20 as medical expense, okay? My sunglasses are medical expenses. All these things in this freaking box are medical expenses. The cold packs, the essential oils. What about supplements, okay? Supple Again, people said to me, I've had a few years at a time where my, my, my migraine was less. Like I used to get it every single day. And then there were times that it went away for maybe a month. And people say, what did you do? Here's the answer. It doesn't matter what I do because there's so many things to try. And every person who suffers, who has migraine, I don't want to say suffer because that is, that doesn't help the cause. Okay. Everyone who has this has something else. So if you're an organized person, one of the things that, and I'm very organized, one of the things that made me feel better was I made a list and I made a list of a hundred things. You know my list by now. I have this list up here of 70 things. I made a list of a hundred things that I could try. And I personally, what I did, and this is how I cracked my migraine disease the first time and the second time around. And then in the middle, they came back, but then I got, again, I got functional. And right now I'm very, very functional. Um, which is why I can do this at all. Um, so yeah, so what are the things that you can try? So what I would do is I would try one new drug. I wouldn't try two new drugs at the same time, right? And most, most of the drugs take six weeks, not all of them, there are a couple of new ones that, have, that work immediately if they're gonna work, okay? And this is, all the headache doctors say that this is the golden age of migraine. Because for the first time ever, you see the commercials on TV, they're actually migraine preventatives. And the American Migraine Foundation told me the other day that if, you know, your doctor needs to tell you, and by the way, anything I say, anything anyone says here, you have to run it by your doctor. You have to, have to, have to. And anything we talk about are just opinions. I'm just here to, so that you're not alone. 
and you feel like you have ideas. Anyway, so I would do one drug. I would do one alternative treatment like acupuncture, biofeedback, guided visualization. Um, you guys know there's cranial sacral treatment. You can add those. You already have four now on your list of 100, right? All sorts of things. And then the third thing would be something maybe a little wacky, okay, that... You know, and here's the other thing. People will say, well, it's never been scientifically proven that X, Y, or Z works. Here's the pro problem. There's not a lot of funding for migraine. It is woefully inadequate for the billion people who have it around the world. So very little has been studied. The drugs, some drugs have been studied really well because they have the backing of a pharma company. Okay, and, 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 you know, private equity and venture capital and all these things, biofeedback. I, I mean, biofeedback, biotech. Okay, do you guys get like migraine brain? Let me also say something else because I just have so many things in my mind and I'm hoping you'll catch a few. Okay, um, there are three, from what I understand, three segments of a migraine. Part one is the prodrome, then there's the full-on migraine, and then there's the postdrome. And the reason I'm telling you this is not like it's something like theoretical. If you can catch your migraine during the prodrome, you know how they say treat it and treat it early? You can do that, but you also, as a parent, can call your pain pal I can feel it's coming on. So what, what, how do people know their migraine is coming on? Why don't you guys say how you know? Mine is that I get irritable. I get like it's hard to see a little bit. I'm shutting the lights. I'm telling everybody to be quiet. My family knows when I do that, I'm getting one. They say, are you getting one? Um, other people yawn. Some people, this is really bizarre. Okay, but hundreds of people have told me that their sensory system gets out of whack. But what I find really bizarre is that they smell the same things. They all, people have told me they smell cigarette smoke that's not there. You guys tell me if this is you, okay? It's the most bizarre thing that I've ever sort of discovered here. They smell things that aren't there like cigarette smoke, ammonia, burnt toast, and like a floral smell, okay? They taste things that don't exist, mostly blood and rust taste. They hear things, not everybody, just different people. They hear things before they get a migraine. They hear whispering that doesn't exist. They hear all the bad smells, Joelle said. I had a feeling, Joelle, you'd say that because you said something before. Um, and I also want to say something to CJ Mama in a second. Um, but anyway, so there are many, many things. If you can recognize it, then you can set in motion certain things that's going to make your life easier and make you a better parent because you've planned, 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 and you can start to execute that plan. Okay? Um, so CJ Mama said she has literally tried everything and nothing works. And I want to tell you that with all my love, I'm giving you a virtual hug, okay? Because I felt like that, and I'm sure many, many people feel like that. But here's the thing. With all my love, I want to suggest that you don't say that anymore. Yes, you have tried things, but you haven't tried everything. I totally promise you, you haven't tried everything. There are so many things to try. And I've had over 9,000 migraines. And 30 years ago, there literally was no internet 35 years ago. There was no, no, people thought it was a headache. I didn't even know what it was. So there are many, 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 many things to try. And never give up. Make a list. And like I said, again, for those of you who are just joining, every six weeks for years, and this is how I got rid of this is how I minimize my migraine disease at certain times in my life. I would try one new drug, I would try one new alternative therapy, and I would try one like 
wacky thing. What's a wacky thing? People talk about a date piercing up here. Um, I don't know if you consider medical marijuana if it's if it's legal in your um, state. I don't know if you consider that really legit or not. I'm not here to endorse it. I, I actually have never used it. I don't really know much about it. Again, and the American Migraine Foundation is not endorsing any of these things, but many people have said it helped. When I used to ask a question every day on the daily migraine, Carly, you beat me by two years, your migraines. I've had them 38 years. Um, anyway, I forgot what I was saying, of course, which happens all the time. Let's see what else. Okay, to be a better parent, how about buying a book about migraine disease that your kids can understand? I looked on Amazon. I saw Wonder Mommy. I saw Why Does Mommy Hurt? You know, there are many pain diseases that are invisible that... Plenty of moms and dads and children have, right? So, um, and that way you can read it to them. Again, you're really trying to educate your family, your friends, the school nurse, the teacher, the kindergarten teacher. The more people understand, the more you're going to have a team around you. Okay. What else do I want to say? Um, I want to say... Hold on. Okay. How do you articulate your migraine disease to your kids? I know I'm not a therapist and I had some thoughts, but you can go online or you can go to a real therapist and say, listen, can you give me some tools? And while you're at it, can you, for those of you who don't have supportive partners, can you give me some language to talk to my husband, my wife, my this, my that, my, my, my whoever? Can you, you know, give me some language? And once you get it down to a little elevator pitch that works for you, you just tell people everywhere you go, you know? Any tips on how to go to school classes with chronic migraine? Carmel the Carmel. Um, school classes. Okay, so I can't tell if you're a parent going to school or if you have kids who want to go to school or if you're a kid who wants to go to school with migraine. Um, I think, I believe strongly in creating a written document, okay? A one-pager, because people can't ha concentrate longer than that. And maybe it has some links on it, resources. Um, well, I'm saying a one-pager online, or you can print it out, or you can do whatever you want. That to the best of your ability, helps you describe what you're going through, and most importantly, what you need, okay, as a, as a caretaker, what you need. So if you can do that, especially, let's say you're a parent who's taking classes. Yeah, people don't understand. I, I know I've said it 20 times here, but it's invisible. It's not their job to figure it out. It's your job to explain it in you know, as many people as there are who don't understand migraine, think it's a headache and dismiss you, certainly in my experience, I've had way more than that tell me, oh, I had one horrible headache and now I realize what you go through. I don't find that insulting. I've had 9,000 migraines. I don't find it insulting they've only had one. I'm really touched that they now they get it. You know, just like you don't understand somebody who has chronic fatigue, or maybe you don't understand someone who has Sjogren's disease or, or, or something, you know? So, okay, I want to throw that in. Here's another thing I want to say, and ask me anything else you want to ask me. Um, oh, you say your daughter's going to start high school who has migraine? In a couple of weeks, I'm doing one on your child has migraine. So I hope you'll join that. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, Yes, anxiety and depression goes along with migraine disease. Nobody really knows, did the anxiety and the depression sort of cause your genetic component or whatever of migraine? Or did the migraine, having migraine disease, create depression and anxiety? You know, or both. It, this is the problem with having migraine, as you all know. It's very hard to tease out. 
But if you have depression and or anxiety, it's not a surprise. Probably almost all of us do. And so you may want to consider talking to a doctor about treating that. Here's another thing I've learned. I've had tons and tons of doctors for my migraine. And yes, you can go to a um, a family doctor. And most people who don't live near a city or don't live in the U.S., this is what they have. So that's what you do. But if you have access to a neurologist, that's even better. But if you have access to a headache clinic, they didn't used to have these 38 years ago, but they have them all over the U.S. and in many other countries. To me, that's ideal because every doctor there only deals with headache disease. You know, in medical school, from what I understand, training of migraine amounts to one hour in all of medical school, okay? So doctors don't know what it is. And again, I could blame them. I could be mad all the time. I could be stressed out all the time and angry and a victim. But you know what? That's just gonna make my migraine worse, right? So I'm gonna do what I can. Let me summarize today's discussion. I am going to plan, plan, plan as a mom for me. I'm gonna get a pain pal, somebody maybe in my neighborhood who I can contact and that person can contact me, maybe a group, so that when I need it, I can pull that trigger. I'm going to talk to the school nurse. I'm gonna talk to the teachers. I may even create a one pager and email it to them so they can understand what most people don't understand about migraine. I can talk to my kids and I can explain that mommy has this thing, it's not contagious, her head hurts sometimes, and when her head hurts, she feels better if she lies in a room and she does this and she does that. I can give my kids jobs. One kid can have a job to please bring me some ice. One kid can have a job to please like lie with me for five minutes. And kids, depending on the age, not your teenagers, but the young kids, love being helpful. Um, and you can tell them, you know, mommy's great. Mommy does this and this and is great at this and this, but mommy just has, you know, it, it hurts her head sometimes. And it's nothing for you guys to worry about, but I want you to know that when I feel that way, I may ask you, we may have to dim the lights. We may have to turn down the TV. You know, we may have to order dinner. Or you may have to make your own dinner, teenager. I have stuff in the refrigerator and I have stuff in the freezer I froze on a good day, right? So these are all things that you can do and should do. You can make a migraine bag with everything you need when you start to get one. You know, I just went through all this stuff in here. I must have a hundred things in my migraine box, which I use for these lunches. Um, the other thing is you might have to be a little strict with yourself. Like today's lunch with Lisa, I made a joke at the beginning. I am not having red wine for lunch because I don't really want to have a migraine when my kids might come home from school. I may not have aged cheese because that I may be a person that gives migraine to. I may skip the chocolate, right? Like you have to do self-care. And speaking to a therapist is a hugely great thing. You know everything's online now. And it needs to be somebody who understands pain. I met someone in my travels um, of doing this migraine work who is a pain therapist. Actually, there is a pain therapist at, I think she's still there, Dawn Buse, B-U-S-E, at Montefiore in the Bronx, in Bronx, New York. You might be able to do some, if you're in New York, you might be able to do some therapy with her. She's remarkable. And if there's Dawn, then there's plenty of people who do this. So, you know, if you can Google, you can f come up with anything, okay? So, so I just wanna say thank you to the American Migraine Foundation, AmericanMigraineFoundation.org. If you go there, remember I said at the beginning, pick two things today that you learned here that you wanna incorporate to make yourself better able to parent when you have migraine. 
okay? And so go on there. It's like a giant library of resources, okay? I hope you'll join us next week. I think next week is migraine in the ER. I'm not sure, AMF, maybe you'll tell me. Um, then we have one on migraine with um, when your children have migraine. And then there's another one. Last week was migraine hacks. You can go on YouTube and see all these if you can't make it. But I really appreciate all your comments. I love all you guys. We're a family and we need to know that we can be together as relentless as migraine is. Thank you and I'll see you next Tuesday, same time, same place. Bye-bye.